All right, well, thanks for tuning in. I just wanted to give everyone a little bit of a behind the scenes look in the fab shop as we start working on the new 21 plus Bronco pre-runner kit. Now this is gonna be an all bolt-on kit and it's gonna be aiming at getting you 15 plus inches of suspension travel in the front and as much as 20 inches in the rear. Again, that's gonna be an all bolt-on suspension kit. So here's a little, like I say, behind the scenes, and what we're seeing here is me fabricating the actual uh, original prototypes for this project. The uh, production versions of these aren't gonna look quite the same because they're not gonna be uh, really fabricated in the same way, but they're gonna have the exact same function. So this is going to test all of our geometry and all the functionality that's intended in this system. Hello, hello, hello. Good night. All right, back to it. Be right back. In this build series, we're going to see the fabrication of each stage of the suspension. And then we're gonna follow that up with testing videos. So stay tuned for that as well. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I will try to respond to everything that I can. All right, so just follow along and uh, see how we put this together. Out with the uh, factory AR. Now we're going to put in the new Vasher Design VX off road unit. So, just to give you a side by side comparison. Yeah, about like that. So, you can see. There's a plus five inch length on the overall unit. Larger, beefier design. Um, it's also designed to give us a landing pad for a bump stop. All right, so we're dry cycling and we're checking what the uh, suspension is cycling against the uh, math in the computer. So that's fully drooped out and we are limiting out on the actual uniballs against the stock suspension. All right, now let's... Now let's uh, up travel the whole thing and see where that lands. So, we're now gonna bring this all the way up and see where this lower control arm ends up. And we're all the way up and we're limiting out on the upper control arm. So now let's check our travel. We'll just measure to this bottom stud. So I'm seven inches from the ground 
to the center of that bottom of the stud. And let's see what we get when we're all the way up. Twenty, twenty-two. Call it twenty-two and a quarter. Uh, so what's that? Fourteen, fifteen and a quarter. Fifteen and a quarter. So it's cycling. Fifth, we'll call it fifteen inches. Now with the larger uniball up here, we can definitely increase the up travel. Um, the down travel is pretty much limited where it's at because. The CV in here is only good for 37 degrees maxed out. We have a slight angle because that, that we're losing a little bit of that 37 degrees because there's a compound angle here. So that drop, that axle is coming out, that CV uh, short shaft coming out of here is not coming straight out. It's going forward slightly. And even a little bit more on this system because we've actually moved the front wheels forward slightly to help out with clearances in this area. Um, and that's just everything zeroed out. So that's not making any camber caster adjustments or playing with any of that geometry. You can actually adjust um, here and here to move your front wheels forward or backward up to an inch with the fa uh, up to a half inch with the factory adjustment. Well, an inch overall, but a half inch forward or a half inch back off of the center. All right, so this is a, a 15, 15 inches is very respectable. Um, we're actually going to set up limiter straps uh, just shy of that. So um, we'll have to see once we get limiters and bumps installed, what the thing actually will end up with. Um, one thing we have to deal with is the body. Right now I have an inch and a half body lift on this, but the kit is designed to have no body lift. So if you want more travel than what you're allowed with the factory body, um, you're going to have to put a body lift on it or you're going to have to change out your fenders. Taking out these fenders and having a, a bigger opening will gain you a little bit. It's not much because there's substructure right behind here and there's a lot of wiring and all, a lot of the stuff in here could be relocated and I've already moved some of it. There was wiring harness running through here, here where the factory mount was. I've rerouted that inside on the other side of that substructure to give me more clearance up in here for the 37s. Um, and my 37s regularly have been hitting my fenders when I'm airing this thing out. So, hence the inch and a half body lift. That, that gives me enough clearance that I'm not just mangling my fenders. I'm just pushing them up slightly, and they do buckle a little bit right here. But it's not enough to damage the paint, so it's totally repairable. Uh, you know, paintless repair, put it that way. Alright, so... Um, I'm just going to go check the computer real quick and see if that 35 degrees is what is actually expected. Yep, exactly. So the 35 degrees in the computer translates perfectly to real world. And what that is, is I limited out this geometry to 35 degrees because that's maxing out the drive shaft almost, the, the CV axle. You're, you're really pushing up on the maximum angle on that CV shaft. Now, I measured the CV shafts in position, um, accounting for that extra angle that they have forward, and I'm getting off of level 37 degrees, and that's where I'm finding them starting to limit out mechanically in, in, in the CV cups. So you don't want to go any further than that because if you're running full drive, and you droop out and you, and you start binding, you're going to be putting a lot of wear on your axles and seals and the joints and everything. And if you're launching it, you don't want the suspension to come down and just literally crash on those axles because that's a good way just to grenade a, a CV axle. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Now all I got to do is extend my, uh, I'm going to put a, make up a machine up a little extension here and move this uh, factory tie rod out, which the factory tie rod has enough angle to handle this suspension exactly as it is. In fact, you can see it's pointing right to where it's going to lo lo locate down here. Depending on what uh, steering rack you're in there, you're going to probably want upgrades internally. Remember, this is your fusible link in your system. You want to break this cheap, easy, easily replaceable, and trail repairable component before you break anything upstream. So 
Don't get too sad if you break one of these. You might, if you're going to wheel these hard, just keep an extra set of inner and outer tie rods on you. Chances are you won't break the outer tie rod, but it is possible. It's the inner one that's most likely to break, and it's going to break right where the stress riser is, and that is where your tie rod uh, shank meets this sleeve here. Um, and you can see I do have uh, stiffeners on, on mine, but I run basically the weakest stiffeners that you can put on. Um, I don't put on the big clamps. That's that's take that's making this way too strong, and you're just pushing the you're pushing your failure point upstream to a far more expensive uh, failure point. All right, so we've got mechanically this thing limits out at 15 inches of travel, so we can call that a max 15 inch travel kit with this uh, five in, five inch plus wheel track setup. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is uh, get this sprung. Get this hooked up and get everything zipped up such that I can actually take it out and start doing a little test driving with it. Okay, so I've got the suspension set up and I've put weight on it and trying to just basically collect data points at, at this stage to see if I need to make any geometry adjustments or any, any or just you know check against any of my math on the computer. All right, we got some shiny new parts to put on. About running out of time for today, but tomorrow I'm going to build some tie rods for it. And these little just temporary setups were in here just to kind of put a load on the vehicle and check out clearances and dimensions and geometry. Um, now that I've done that, I need to build some tie rods that will actually clear the springs when you turn the wheels. <laughs> 